Hello everyone. I'm happy to announce the release of SDF Prototyper version 2. This new version is based on Chuck's SDF presets node. Links are in the description. Huge thanks to Chuck. Let's start by installing the add-on. There are two versions of the zip file, 4.2 and 4.3. Make sure you download the correct version that matches your Blender version and don't unzip the file. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, click on the small drop-down arrow in the top right corner and select Install from Disk. Find and select the downloaded zip file. Make sure the add-on is enabled and you can find the UI in the sidebar of your viewport. You can add your SDF objects by pressing Shift A under Metaball. Note that all SDF object names start with SDF. You must start by adding the domain to preview the SDF. Let's check out the UI panel. The domain settings are at the top. You can show and hide the bounds, adjust the domain size, and increase or decrease the resolution based on what your system can handle. You can select your SDF handlers in the viewport or select from this list if the viewport is cluttered. Selecting the SDF objects will display all the properties underneath. This area contains the Boolean operations. The Boolean types consist of union, difference, intersect, offset, and panel. These operations can be toggled with numbers. And you can experiment with the styles as well. Other properties are self-explanatory. For more detailed property settings, check out my previous video. Most SDF properties are similar, except for SDF Curve and SDF Mesh. Let's talk about SDF Curve. When you add it to the scene, a default Bezier Curve is created. This functions like a normal Bezier Curve. You can either use it as is, or remove it and create a new curve. Regarding SDF Mesh, it's not recommended to use this node as it's very heavy and slow. However, if you wish to use it, there are two methods. The first method is to add the SDF mesh and use the eyedropper to select your own mesh. An empty object is created to contain the property information. But your mesh will cover the SDF preview. You can go to the object properties under viewport display and change the display to wire. The second method is to select your mesh, then select the domain. Make sure the domain is the active object, right-click, and under SDF Operators, choose Convert to SDF. This method automatically sets everything up for you. While we're on the right-click menu, you'll see options for Duplicate, Delete, and Clear, which are pretty self-explanatory, as well as Convert to Mesh. We'll discuss that later. Let's return to the list. Beside the list, we have the Duplicate button, Up and Down buttons to rearrange your Boolean operations. You can also use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard for this. as well as delete and clear, similar to the right-click options. You also have the option to hide the list to double-check your steps. And finally, convert to mesh. You can find this button in the right-click menu and on the UI. Once you're finished with your SDF modeling, you can convert your SDF to mesh and further process it for either sculpting or retopology. Converting to Mesh will save your domain as a backup, so you can modify it later if needed. It's disabled in the viewport, and you'll need to unhide it. Finally, here's a bonus feature for Blender 4.3 Beta. A new SDF object called SDF Sculpt. With the new Grease Pencil to Curve node, you can utilize this in SDF similarly to what we did with SDF Curve. 
Since it's grease pencil, it's flexible to use, much like sculpting. That should cover everything for this video. Thank you for watching.